Hey, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create real high contrasting images using Photoshop. So this is the before and this is the after. And you can see that a real punchy contrasting black and white can, can completely change an image. So I'm going to walk you through the process and start again. So I've just gone back to the original. So the first thing I want to do is come down to the bottom here and I want to come up to where it says black and white, I'm going to select that. And what this is going to enable us to do is to change the colors within the image. So you can hit auto, you can do that, and Photoshop will do what it thinks needs to be done. The other thing that you can do is you can change these sliders here. So you can move them down and up and just do it by eye. The other thing that you can do is use this tool here, this little finger. You can come over to a specific color, click, and then you can move left and right and it will adjust the color that way. I prefer to do it by eye just because I think it's uh, it's better just to do it that way. It's, it's, it's very quick and it's very, very simple. So what I want to do is make sure within the image that the blacks are black and the whites are white. That is a good rule to stick to when you want high contrasting imagery. Now you have to be careful with this particular adjustment because if you go too far, then what can happen is the image can start to blow out and you can see in fact it's starting to pixelate. It's not actually pixelation, it's, uh, it's, it's blowing up the colors there. So you just gotta be a little bit careful and just not push this too far. So we just wanna create some contrast. So we wanna make the whites whites and the blacks black. So obviously in this is the reds and yellows and depending on your particular image You'll have to adjust them accordingly. So once you've done that, we can then come down to the bottom here and we're going to select gradient map. Now a gradient map will come up depending on what settings you've had previously. All you need to do is just double click in the middle there. Now on this particular one, we've got the opposite colors. So we just need to switch these over. So just click on the first box here, come to color, bring it down to black, say OK and then come to this side here, click on the color again, and just push that up to white and say okay. So what we can now do is move these sliders so we can increase our blacks and we can also increase our whites. And you'll see what happens here. If I push these whites, then it will start to brighten everything up. Now, remembering that blacks need to be black and whites need to be white, we don't wanna push these to the point where we're losing detail. If you come to the middle here, this will adjust the midtones. So that's a good, good way of really precisely getting an, a nice contrasting image. So I think around there looks pretty good. So our whites are, are, are quite high and our blacks, there's a lot of black in here anyway. So click OK to that and let's just click on the X there. Now what we want to do is come down to the bottom here and we want to make a levels adjustment. So in a levels adjustment, we've got the blacks, the grays, and the whites, exactly the same as a gradient map, but this is just gonna correct all of our image. So I wanna push the midtones up a little bit, and that will flatten the image, meaning it will flatten the blacks, the grays, and the whites. So we're gonna to have to counteract that in a minute, but this is mainly to do an adjustment for our background and our uh, flowers and things like that that's in the shot. So I'm just brightening them up a little bit. So what I wanna now do is to click Control or Command I to invert that mask so the adjustment has been hidden. And I'm already on the brush tool here. So select your brush tool. Let's come up to the top here. Make sure it's a soft and round brush. And we wanna just bring this size down a little bit and make sure that this is set to white. If you can't see that, then just click on the color there and move the color up to white and press OK. Now what we can do is make our brush bigger and smaller by using the bracket keys and I'm just gonna go around and I'm going to paint in the highlights. So anywhere that this light is dappling across, so like the hand there, part of the top, and there's some detail in the background here as well. I just want to bring all of that out. And you can see up here on the mask where I'm painting, what's happening. So it's just bringing that effect back. So there's some areas here on the top that have got little bits of light on them. 
So I'm going to paint them in and up here as well. Okay. So also there's a few highlights on the hair, so I can bring some of that back just to add some contrast. And also I might just go over her eyes a little bit there just to bring details out and also just around her lips there, just to brighten them a little bit. So what we can do once we've, once we've done that and we've made our adjustments, we can come to the opacity and we can bring this down and push it up. So it's very rare that I would leave that at 100%. I'd always end up knocking this down to usually between 60 and 80% just to bring down that effect so it's not as heavy. So we're gonna do another adjustment. We're gonna come down to the bottom here. And this time we're gonna select curves. And I'm gonna select a point around here. So it's in the, it's just creeping into the whites and just past the grays there. And I'm just gonna push that up a little bit. And you can see what that's doing to the image. It's just pushing them whites up. So again, what we want to do with that is invert that. So Control Command I, and we're still on the brush tool. We've still got the same settings. So now we can come back and let's just select some of the highlights again. And this is gonna give us just a little bit more contrast for our final result. So this here, you wanna be quite sparingly with it. You don't really wanna go over everything but some of the areas you want just to pick out some natural highlights like here and maybe across the eye there so that's pretty good we've added quite a lot of contrast now so what we want to do is we want to basically make one image out of all the adjustments we've just done so i'm going to press the shift key selecting all of the adjustments there i'm going to press shift option command and e and that is going to then create one layer with all them adjustments there. I'm now gonna right click and I'm going to convert this to a smart object. That then enables me to bring this into Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna come up to Filter and select Camera Raw Filter. Now what I can do is just make some real minor adjustments. So I'm gonna increase the contrast a little bit more and then these highlights here, I'm just going to bring them down a little bit and the shadows. I want to still keep some of them dark areas, but I don't want to make it so dark that like here, her eye is blending right into that shadow there. We want a high contrasting image, but we don't want it to lose detail. So the whites and blacks are going to be our friends as well with this. It's going to really just help us fine tune the image so I'm just doing this by eye so around there looks pretty good you can play with texture and clarity but just do that very sparingly because um, especially on portraits it can start to make the skin look a little bit odd so once we've done that that looks pretty good we can come down to the curves tool and we could always just tweak this just to give us some more contrast so again, doing this by eye, and we always want to lean towards the darker side of things, but also uh, it's a balance. We don't want to overexpose the whites too much, and we don't want to underexpose the, the darks too much. So the highlights on here, is, there's always a tipping point. It's about there, because if I go the other way, they blend and they disappear, and if I go too far, then they start to blow out. You can see that there. So the other thing that I would like to do on this would probably um, add a vignette to this. So you can, there's many ways you can do this. You can do this um, using brushes and things like that. But I, I think this, on this particular image, this will work quite well. So just bringing that vignette down there, that looks pretty good. So let's click OK to that. And we can now see the difference on that. So we come to the history, you can see the difference of just bringing it into camera raw what it's done it's created a, a real nice heavy contrast there for us especially that vignette so that's given us a really really nice contrasting image so if we look at the before and after i'm going to come down to here and make a snapshot you can see that this was the before and this was the after here so you can see there, there's some really nice contrasting tones in there and it's given us a real punchy looking shot. 
So that's how you do it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.